Hey everybody, Tia Torres here with yet another episode of Convicts Anonymous. So, you know, I just realized that I've never talked about the difference between jail versus prison because there is a difference. Um, although people tend to use the word jail across the board, but there technically is a difference. So, um, you know, my podcast is mainly about prison life, but I'm going to take a few minutes to at least give you an explanation of the difference between the two. So jail is normally when a person gets arrested and this is where they wait while they're trying to fight their case or they're awaiting trial. Okay. Usually you see these like at the county jail, um, they're usually these big, huge buildings. Um, you know, even though prison is normally like the scary place, um, technically speaking, if you ask any inmate, they'll tell you we'd rather be in a prison environment than a jail environment. So here are some of the, um, some of the, I got a list of, uh, the pros and cons, get it? Cons, um, <laughs> being in jail versus prison. Um, the first is the freedom. You know, when you're in a jail, um, you're normally inside a building, whether you're on the first floor to the, to the sixth floor, you're in a building. Okay. Um, you don't see the light of day except through like sometimes these little tiny windows, um, depending on, you know, which particular jail you're in. So, and you're confined to just your area. Um, it's pretty claustrophobic. So, um, you know, I, I would have to say for lack of a better word, your you have less freedom in a jail as opposed to a prison, even though technically you have no freedom at all. Um, number two, fresh air. Like we all need fresh air, right? So again, that goes back to number one, which is in a jail, you are confined to a building. I will say this. I like, I know like the LA County jail in Los Angeles, they used to, I don't know if they still do, but they used to let inmates go on like the roof, like at the very tippy tippy top. Um, I mean, you're in the middle of downtown LA and breathing in all the smog. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's better for your health, but, um, you know, there are some jails that do allow you to go outside into like a secure yard. Normally, you know, they don't, but there are some. So fresh air is a big thing. Um, I know not only for a healthy mind, but a healthy body. Okay. In prison, you get to go out and about, depending on your your security status. Um, you can go out into a yard, you know, on the grass, walk a track, you know, like the the, you know the, we call it like the racetrack thing where you can walk, and and stretch you know stretch your legs whatnot. So, um, you know that that was a big thing I know for like my my ex husband. Um, he was locked up in a county jail for it was like six years, so he didn't get to feel any fresh air for that long while he was fighting his case. Uh, number three is you actually get more perks in prison. Um, for one, um, your, your phone calls and your, and your, um, correspondence and emailing and writing letters to, to your people on the outside, you know, in a County jail, um, you don't have that as much, um, your food, you know, I know prison food isn't the greatest, but county food is the worst of the worst. Okay. So, um, you know, there's that, um, even though you're not supposed to have a whole lot of perks when you're incarcerated, you do get a little bit more, um, you know, in prison. I do know, and I have heard from guys that are in a jail, they'll go days, sometimes weeks in the same like jumpsuit don't get to wash their clothes um, or take a shower. So uh, in a prison, you get more of that. Uh, number four, which is probably the most important to an inmate is um, visits. Uh, in a regular jail, uh, from the ones I've been to, I would say like 90 some percent of them are through the glass. You know, the, what you see on the movies where you're on the phone and you're through a glass window. In prison, 
again, depending on your security status, your level, as they call it, um, normally they're what they call contact visits. And you go into a big visiting yard or a big visiting room and you can sit there with um, the person you're going to visit. Um, number five is privacy. I mean, prison is, doesn't exactly provide a lot of privacy, but you know, a lot of times, um, like at these county jails, you're in a room, like a big room with like, you know, 50 other guys. I know like in California, they have like big dorms where it's just like double and triple stack bunk beds. And it's just like filled with inmates and your space is confined to like your little bunk. Um, my ex, Tony, like he's in a single man cell. So he's got his own, you know, room um, at the prison he's in. So it just depends on like the overcrowding. It depends on the facility. But normally in prison, you know, you have your own cell where you might share it with somebody else or even have it to yourself. Um, and what else here? Oh, number six and the final one. When someone gets to prison and they've been there for a length of time, it's very common for them to become more disciplined, seasoned, respectful um, amongst their fellow inmate. You know, in the jails, you know, a lot of these guys are in and out, in and out, you know, sometimes minor offenses, DUIs, uh, urinating in public, <laughs> you know? So you get like these knuckleheads that just don't get it. And, um, you know, it can cause problems for you um, as you're trying to like just stay in your own space and do your time. I actually had something happen. Um, oops, bug. Um, when I was married to my, my fourth ex-husband, um, when I went to go visit him, he was in the jail awaiting his trial. Um, he actually had done quite a number of years in prison prior and he had developed a reputation of higher status, shall, shall we say? So he was well respected amongst his fellow inmates. And we were in visiting one day, and um, it's, it's so interesting the hierarchy and the and the rules that go on within, you know, a jail and a prison system. And I'll try to make this really quick. I was sitting in the visiting room, and you know. At Los Angeles County Jail, you wait hours to get in, hours, okay? And uh, you start talking to the other people in the visiting room. And there was a man there. And, um, you know, he just said, oh, who, who are you here to visit? I said, oh, my husband. I said, how about you? And he says, my son. I said, oh, it's, you know, it's so hard when it's one of your kids. Um, and uh, he said, yeah, you know, it's, it's, he's never been in trouble before. And I said, really? And he goes, yeah. And I said, what's he, what's he here for? He says he's fighting a murder case. I'm like, oh man, that's that's rough. You know, it's really rough. And um, so that was it. Very casual conversation. And we got called into the visiting area. And he was sitting two people over with his son, and I'm there with my husband. And as we're talking, now mind you, we're looking through the glass, and you can't really hear what's going on on the other side because it's really you know thick glass. And as I'm talking to my husband, I see him kind of do this and then he's leaning back and he's like doing this. So I know something's going on. I'm like, what, what's, what's up? He goes, there's some punk ass kids starting shit. And I'm kind of looking down and I see the father kind of lean back and look at me. And I'm like, oh, I was just talking to that kid's dad out in the visiting. I said, what's, what's going on? He goes, I don't know. His some kid is calling me a, a rat and a snitch. And I'm like, do you know? Because I've never seen the guy in a day in my life. So I'm like, okay. And we have our visit. And, um, you know, the correctional officers come in. They start lining them all up and, you know, getting all the inmates lined up to go back to their cells. And you can see through the glass. And I see my ex-husband standing there and he keeps looking behind him. And he's like doing this, like, what, what? And I'm like, What's going on? And um, we leave and the father stops me and he goes, um, I don't 
my son was all worked up. I, I don't know what happened. I said, I, I don't know. He was yelling at my husband. And he said, and I said, what, what did, did something transpire during your visit? He goes, no, we were just, you know, casually talking. And I said, you know, yeah, we were out there for a couple hours or so waiting. And he goes, I got to talking to this lady here, you know, about you and her, about her husband. And, and uh, the kid's like, what, what, what? You were discussing my case with somebody? He goes, no, I didn't discuss your case. Just very vague information, just casual talk. So I get out to my car and my phone rings and I can see that it's the LA County jail. So my husband's calling me already. And he says, what the fuck happened out there and visiting? I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. So he starts telling me this kid is still giving him grief. It's like, he's like he's an 18 year old kid. And um, he's just calling me a snitch and a rat. And your wife was trying to get information about my case. And I'm like, what? So I repeat the same story to my husband. And um, he says, okay, let me, let me handle this. Cause this, this kid's going to get me killed calling me these names, you know? So a little while later, he calls me back and he goes, it's all worked out. He goes, uh, now that you explained everything to me, um, he said, uh, a few other inmates stepped in and told the kid, do you know who this is? Like, do you know who he is in the prison system? And when they told this kid, the kid was like, oh God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Don't kill me, don't beat me. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, my husband or my ex-husband, he was like, dude, it was just casual talk. Like they weren't, I'm not trying to get information on your case. I don't even know who you are. So I asked my then husband, like, okay, so I don't understand what, like, what was the big deal? He explained it to me. Sometimes the visiting room, the visiting area can cause just as many problems as being in prison. Because what happens is that, let's say me, I'm trying to maybe try to get my husband off on his charges. So I'll start asking people information about their loved one's case, trying to pull information out. And then I take said information and I go to the cops or the district attorney's office and exchange. I'm going to tell you what I heard if you drop his charges or, or, you know, whatever. So I guess, I, I guess apparently it's a thing. <laughs> you know? What do, what do I know? Um, and again, it's just doing this for so many years. You, st you have to learn the ropes. You have to learn the rules and everything. So um, in prison, <laughs> that probably wouldn't have got as far as it did. Because again, these guys have been sentenced already. Normally speaking, they're just a little more mature than the average, you know, kid coming in there and trying to puff out his chest. So anyways, there's my little quick 411 on jail versus prison. And let me tell you something, the drama, you think women are bad? Yeah, you see the drama that goes in with these dudes in the, that are locked up. It is crazy. Anyways, um, you can check it out. You can continue to follow me on my Patreon platform. Um, go to patreon.com and search for Convicts Anonymous and where you can find the rest of my podcasts and keep up with everything prison. See you later.